Redditors who massively fucked up at work. What happened? Accidentally left out the move next method on a loop that sent out an email broadcast, which meant it mail bombed the first recipient in the loop until we realized what was happening and killed the process. The CEO's email was the first email address in the loop. He was an arsehole anyways, and was absolutely incoherent with rage when his outlook crashed when downloading 15,000 emails, inviting him to a satisfaction survey. Good thing it was only a test. One of the managers where I worked had a junior IT guy add a vacation autoresponder to his email, and the confirmation window had a checkbox, apply to inbox. The manager never cleans his inbox, and the IT guy decided to check that box. Something like 10,000 emails were sent that day. Important clients, who he would have been conversing more often with, were getting multiple hundreds of vacation notifications. Nothing bad came from it, and most of the clients were good-hearted about it. He was getting replies like, Frank, please stop. We know you're on vacation. I was a bartender. I knocked down the entire top shelf. Thousands of dollars in liquor. ETA, I didn't get in trouble. The boss just built a stronger shelf. He found it hilarious that the only thing that I saved was a $6 bottle of slow gin that happened to be on the wrong shelf. Chemistry teacher here. On my first day of teaching, I set my classroom on fire after some unfortunate incidents involving sodium, water, and a glass tank. The problem was that the glass tank was too big, so the hydrogen gas got to build up into a decent amount. Then, suddenly, kaboom! The glass tank exploded. There was shattered glass everywhere and hit the students who were all wearing safety glasses. A column of water grew from the top glass tank to the ceiling, and the ceiling started to burn. After a few moments, the fire died out and the fire alarm was loud, and I had to make sure all of the students were okay, which they were. It ended up being one of my funniest classes to teach for many years. The students absolutely loved it. I was a bit of a nervous wreck for a few hours. The worst thing in hindsight is all of the comments saying things like, you started your career with a bang and stuff like that. I love telling this story. Back in the floppy disk, pre-internet days of computer, I was tasked by my job to do a software installation on board a Coast Guard icebreaker. I flew from Ottawa to Halifax. Then I caught a taxi to CFB Shearwater, from where a twin otter flew me a thousand kilometers north to a little town on the border of Quebec and Labrador. From there, I was flown by helicopter to do an at-sea landing on the icebreaker. After landing, I went down to the engine control room where the computer was located and laid out the discs. Disc 1, Disc 2, Disc 3, Disc 4, Disc 6. Disc 5 was still on my desk in Ottawa. Slammed a forklift into a Camaro. Oh damn, that is not good for the resale value of the forklift. I dropped a screw inside the engine, edit, motor, of a TGV train. Oh god. We spent half an hour trying to catch it by moving a magnetic stick into the crankshaft with oil spilling everywhere. The engine was new and about to be mounted on a train that was supposed to run in the day. I was so terrified, I would possibly cause quite a lot of trouble since no other train or engine was available. Shout out to my manager who finally got that screw. It definitely deserves his half a dozen croissants the next morning. Not me personally, but a guy I worked with at a feed mill accidentally added the incorrect mineral bags to the sheep feed mix that contained copper, wiped out an entire flock of over 100 sheep. Not so fun story. Back in the 1970s, this chemical manufacturing company in Michigan accidentally sent out a fire retardant they produced in the place of a livestock feed supplement they also produced. By the time someone figured out what happened, it had already been used on hundreds of farms, and they ended up having to put down tens of thousands of cattle and pigs and over a million chickens. The chemical, polybrifinated biphenyl, or PBB, if you want to look it up, had also made its way into meats, eggs, and dairy products. And they are still studying the long-term health impacts on the thousands of people who ate those products and the descendants of those people, as well as farm workers and people who were employed at the chemical plant. So yeah, 100 dead sheep is bad, but it could be worse. I was a nanny. A little two-year-old I was watching fell down and hit the back of her head on the concrete. I rushed over to her, but she didn't move or blink just laid on her back motionless. I tried to check for breath 
and pulse and pretty much blanked on everything I'd learned in CPR slash first aid training in my panic. She seriously looked dead. I screamed for help. The neighbors came running. I told them to call an ambulance. The police, the fire department, and the ambulance showed up within minutes. She was rushed to the hospital and a million tests were run. Turns out she barely even had a bruise. No concussion, no seizure, no injury, nothing. The doctor said she probably just got scared and froze for just long enough for me to lose my shit. Her parents were charged $5,000 to tell them their child got surprised. I work at a quick lube style shop, so I work around fairly new vehicles. I wish I could say it's all cheap shit, but no. Dude comes in one day for one of our services, so I'm doing everything under the hood of a BMW 7 series. We fill the oil, ran the pressure check, closed the hood because the newer BMWs have a digital oil readout on the screen in the dash. Dude leaves, come back five hours later, hood is fucking smoking. Aw oh, fuck. We open the hood and there's about three quarts of oil in the engine compartment. I didn't put the oil cap back on properly like I thought I did. Man, I was pissed. Work in the stock room of a Malwart, grabbed the Pepsi palette with the forklift and didn't realize it was the short palette. The forks came out on the other side and threw to the pallet of glass coke bottles it was up against. When I lifted the Pepsi, the coke came up with it and it dumped an entire unwrapped pallet of glass bottles, spilling all that sticky soda on the floor. That mess was hell to clean up. However, the vendor had to eat the cost because that store posted policy is that they cannot leave unwrapped pallets unless it's being worked. I worked in a pizza place and they caught me eating olives on camera. It wasn't two to three olives. I could eat like a thousand in a shift. I really don't know why, and it's a time in my life I want to forget. My first day working at a coffee shop, I left my Sharpie in the oven. Finally found it while trying to warm a sandwich and had to shut the whole thing down to be cleaned. It smelled like a chemical weapon. I was new to SQL and accidentally mailed a list of people with deceased underscore date is not null instead of is null. So an entire marketing campaign was sent to dead people that eventually led to our marketing tools being hard coded not to mail dead people, which makes sense. But I was terrified when I found out. Measure something on a construction site off by a foot. It wasn't discovered until it cost $150,000 to remedy the mistake. Nothing happened to me because it was a $10 million job. There was a big project where a highway overpass for cars and trolleys was being replaced. The whole thing stopped and got pushed out a year because when they were fabricating the steel, someone at the plant caught a critical error in the plans. The chef was angry that day. I was advised by my coworkers to do whatever it takes to get on his good side. I thought, eh, I'll just try and avoid him. He was standing in the cooler taking inventory. Beside him were the five gallon containers of prepped food. I sneaked in and tried to quickly grab the ranch container, but in my haste, I nudged another and it was the French onion soup, all five gallons of it, on his pants and shoes. Yes, he was upset. The prep girl was upset. I had 10 minutes till lunch service started. I have no idea how I'm still alive. During the first week of my first job in animation, after I graduated, I had to move a bunch of scene files from one server to another. The files were so heavy, so I was told just to cut and paste them to make it faster. I accidentally put them in the wrong area and without thinking just deleted them. Went back to move the files again, they weren't there. I had forgotten I hadn't copied them. I lost 5 minutes of full animation. My longtime friend who recommended me for the job got in shit because his backups didn't catch the files and my direct supervisor worked for 21 days straight to help redo all the animation. The studio and everyone involved were way nicer to me about it than I expected. I kept my job and I brought in donuts for the whole crew up for a week after, but it was an awful start. Controls engineer, made a copy paste error while programming, and a two was a three. So one machine tagged at three was waiting for conditions of two. So naturally, the lift moved when it thought it should and crashed into another machine. Of course, I'm having to stand there figuring out the issue while maintenance is up there replacing busted parts. But because I made a thousand changes, it didn't click fast enough and well, it happened again. Very first tech job as a youngin, and I forgot to verify if someone had backed up files before a clean OS install. Lost the guy's Outlook archive files with 10 years worth of conveniently stored and important emails. Apologized and sheepishly turned the issue over to the admins. 
What a great story. You'll learn as you move on with your career that there's so much going on with managers that sometimes, although rare, they can be managing so many other influences that like a system or don't see any benefit of change that they are eventually happy for something to go wrong because it gives them a chance to put something to sleep and write it off as broken. I worked in a nice steakhouse. First week, I accidentally put salt in the sugar bowls and sugar in the salt shakers. Customers started to complain about their sweet steaks and salty coffees. We had to pull all the salt and sugar from each table my last day as a waiter. I can really relate to this. While in high school, I had a job at night working at a decent restaurant and accidentally mixed up ranch with blue cheese from the big jugs the dressings came in. I just added it to the salad bar with a tag out that said blue ranch so as not to waste it, and the customers actually used it all within a few days. I felt bad for screwing up, but there was no repercussions for my mistake. Not me, but I worked at a place that made wiring harnesses. Dude's fourth-ish day, he's running the wire cutting machine, suddenly says he's sick and leaves, never came back. He absolutely messed up everything on the cut. What's sad is he wouldn't have been fired, or even been in trouble, he didn't have to leave. I've seen about 5 new employees over the last 6 months just leaving the office and never coming back. I've been near them. I've been instructed to answer their questions about work. They were aware of it. They never actually asked anything, and way more employees remained and worked well. So I really don't know what's so terrifying for those who left without speaking a word. If only they'd say anything. I'd help them with all my knowledge. But they just pretend going to lunch or answering the phone, and no one ever saw them again. I work as an apprentice in an IT and printer repair office. We had a tech apprentice last year who finished his education and sent out an email to everyone, around 20 people including management, saying that it was his last day and thank you to everyone. We got along pretty well. We were around the same age and we both hated our jobs. So I replied with, God I wish that were me, DeviantArt comment meme. Realized an hour later I hit reply to all instead of reply and sent it out to the entire office. Almost shit my pants. Luckily, no one brought it up, except one to two coworkers I'm on good terms with who found it funny, but God, I wanted to die. Was promoted to terminal manager, and I was a dumb 25-year-old idealist. We had an essential employee, a mechanic, who kept our fleet of trucks running. At least that was his job description. Less than a month on the job, it came to my attention that he was working alcoholic and his work on our fleet was underwhelming. My boss told me to fire him once we had a new mechanic ready to come in. I told the old mechanic that he should probably start looking for new work if he couldn't do the job. Word got back to him through the pipeline that he was going to be fired. I went to a bar with my assistant manager after working 40 days straight and lo and behold, the mechanic showed up. Long story short, the mechanic attempted to abduct me with his adult son and dump my body in a frozen lake. The whole thing became a large dramatic bullshit event that put me in the hospital for a few hours and we both lost our jobs. A customer got the best of me. I worked upper level customer service for an Australian winery conglomerate that shall remain unnamed. They owned a bunch of exclusive brands but only had a team of six or seven customer service reps to service them all. Two of us got paid $1 an hour or more to be upper level customer service and take escalations, which is fancy sock for get shit on by the wealthy. A customer from their top brand made an online purchase, which we shipped immediately. He decided he was upset about that, as we should have read his mind and known that he wanted it three months later. Anyways, he called me a retard, so I cancelled his order, his wine club membership, and deleted his customer profile. I was not let go due to them literally needing me to keep the department running, but my manager burst a blood vessel in his eye. Oh, I have fucked up so many times. Here's my two favorites. One, worked at an egg farm and was carrying 12 flats of eggs. Didn't see the pallet. Someone left in the walkway. Tripped on the pallet, and hundreds of eggs go flying and splattered all over the floor. Meanwhile, I fell and dislocated my wrist and shoulder. 2. I was washing a dairy cow named Laverne before showing her at a county fair. She didn't like having her tail washed. She kicked the bucket of soapy water over onto my rubber boots and took off running. I grabbed both sides of her halter but my boots were slick and she basically ran around the washing area in circles with me hanging onto her head 
while my tractionless boots acted like water skis. Of course, this happened in front of crowds of people who started laughing. Finally, I lost my grip and sat down in a puddle while Laverne ran towards a little boy holding a scone. He dropped the scone and ran, and Laverne ate his scone. I got night barn duty for that. I work at a jail. We have things called keep aparts to keep people away from each other since they may have conflicts on the street or otherwise. I accidentally let these two guys go into the same room together. Guy number one is fucking massive. Guy number two is small and allegedly killed guy number one's friend. Guy number two doesn't know guy number one, but guy number one knows who he is and what he allegedly did. So they go into this room with about 30 other people and after about 20 minutes, guy number one casually walks over to guy number two and beats the ever loving shit out of him. Easily could have killed him. Luckily, we stopped it before it got worse, but I still fucked up massively. Not related, but guy number one was recently killed by his friend when they were drunk and his friend accidentally shot him in the head. Now guy number one's friend is in jail for murder. 